Hello YouTubers, Andrew Miller here. I uh, wanted to make a special video after finding a very special video on YouTube and I kind of wanted to spread awareness, maybe uh, get some headway for this thing. And it all relates back to the canceled Disney movie Gigantic. If some of you guys aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, Gigantic was an animated movie that Disney Animation Studios was actually about to make along with uh, Frozen 2, along with Wreck-It Ralph 2, and a bunch of other ones. I think it was announced in 2015, like right when, uh, no wait, that, that was before Zootopia. But it was announced in 2015, it was gonna be a retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk. And with it being a retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk, it was going to do a couple things a little bit different. Like, it was going to focus on the Age of Exploration, and it w I think it was going to take place in Spain. Uh, the main character, Jack, was going to be an explorer, and uh, maybe he sets off from Spain, he comes across the Beanstalk, and he goes to the lands of the giants. But instead of coming across uh, the giant or the giant's wife, he comes across an 11-year-old giant named Inma, a very interesting name, Inma, and they describe her as very fiery, feisty, a lot to control, and I got really excited. I thought this was a very unique way of telling the original Jack and the Beanstalk tale. I mean, Disney already did Jack and the Beanstalk with Mickey and the Beanstalk, and they had Willie the Giant and everything there. So I thought this could be really cool. We can explore how we can explore what Spain is like, kind of like how Frozen kind of explored um, countries like Norway or maybe Sweden, and since they related to Han Christian Andersen. But I thought not only could we explore like the country of Spain and understand what the age of exploration was, maybe this could be a very interesting uh, relationship to explore, like a, a giant and a human. And we don't really see a lot of giant, a lot of movies centered on giants. I mean, we have movies like Attack of the 50 Foot Woman. We have a, a lot of like, a lot of giant fetish videos that, you know, a lot of people of us are familiar with. I mean, there's a lot of vi videos on YouTube of wit featuring giants and ASMR uh, fetish videos and everything like that. And I thought maybe this could be an, an interesting way of having a relationship with a human and a giantess. Not like a boyfriend-girlfriend anything, but something more on the lines of a friendship. You know, this would be interesting to explore in a Disney film, you know? And it'd also be cool to see how Princess Inma in interacts with the other Disney princesses, you know? It, it, it seemed like such an interesting and a cool idea. The concept art was beautiful. I got really excited. Unfortunately, they kept delaying it uh, to like to a, to a release date in 2018 and 2020 until finally in the year 2017, they officially canceled it. I was so disappointed. I was looking forward to it. I thought this was such a big mistake. My opinion was they did this because they wanted to focus more on the popularity of the movies Wreck-It Ralph and Frozen 2 because Wreck-It Ralph 2 or Ralph Breaks the Internet actually took the place of the release date that originally went to Gigantic. And 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 hear me out, I, I like those movies, they're fine, they're decent, but I never really saw Wreck-It Ralph 2 or Frozen 2 as the big groundbreakers. You know, they're sequels, you know, naturally they're already going to have an advantage coming out, and obviously they have their audiences, and I, I just didn't like them as much as everybody else did, but they're still okay movies. I just thought this was such a missed opportunity, you know, something more fresh, something more new. And that's what I love about Disney, when they do something very unique, something they haven't done before. I mean, yeah, all the movies that they do, and heck, even the remakes, are considered retellings of classic stories, which, you know, Gigantic was going to be a retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk, but I thought it was going to be such a unique telling of the storyline. And I thought it was such a missed opportunity, and I was kind of disappointed that we would never get anything like that again. Until yesterday, when I came across this video on YouTube. And it also led me to this Patreon page. It's called Project Gigantic. Apparently, a bunch of fans are in the process of making their own animated fan film of what they think Gigantic may have been. And I couldn't believe it. I... I looked at it and I thought this was such a great idea. Anything fro frozen, anything gigantic related, I think 
would be great to see. And it's, it's kind of amazing to see that there are people into this as much as I am. You know, people who wanted to see this happen and were just as disappointed as I was when they announced that it was canceled. So for a special treat, I wanted to show you guys the video and my reactions to it, as you will. Hopefully you guys can get an understanding of where I'm coming from, why I enjoy this, and hopefully I can spread the word and maybe help them get some Patreons to help them finance this fan-made movie. So sit back and relax and uh, come watch this clip with me. Let me give you a little bit of trivia of what this video is. It's actually one of the songs that was presented during the Disney Expo in 2015 when they originally announced the movie Gigantic, and it's called Little Man. And I think that there was actually a couple lyrics presented at the time. Uh, I don't know if this was the full song or part of the song. I think it may have been part of the song, and they just used what they had to kind of make it into a song that, you know, that probably we would see in the movie and that would make sense of it. And I like this little tribute that they do. Like, they explain that this was something that was being done in Disney and then they canceled it, but they turned it into something uh, of substance. You know, they turned it into something to give to the fans. You know, people, they recognized that people were waiting for this as well and they put, they put a lot of effort into this thing. Like, it, it's amazing how much effort went into it. I mean, it's not going to be as detailed and up to Disney and standards and animation, but for what we got so far, I think it's really good. And I think it's really worth, you know, diving into. Look, a little man cradled in my little hand. <laughs> a couple things I like about this opening is at the start of it, we see Emma carrying Jack and as she's spinning around, he's like kind of dizzy, like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> really emphasizing the size uh, compared to her, like how much force she's putting on him. And it, you'll notice in, in this clip that there's a lizard that looks suspiciously like Randall Boggs from Monsters, Inc. And for those of you who don't know, Disney really loves poking fun at themselves. They like putting these little Easter eggs in their movies, like uh, Pixar does it all the time. Like sometimes you'll find uh, the Pizza Planet car in their movies, uh, the Buzz, Buzz Lightyear, Woody, or Jesse toys all around. And and even, uh, I think the Disney anima animated movies do that too sometimes. And it's kind of interesting that they use Randall Boggs since he's a Pixar character. He's not like from Disney animation, animated studios. But then again, they use Merida in Wreck-It Ralph too. So I guess it kind of evens out. What we might also notice is Disney does a lot with lizards nowadays. Like, uh, I think it was last year they had a, a lizard or a gecko as the fire spirit in Frozen 2, and and there's Pascal the chameleon from Tangled. So it kind of makes you wonder, is Disney have kind of a, like a gecko, that, a lizard fetish or something? <laughs> but I, I like this because it really highlights how different this world is. Like, uh, this weird-looking purple lizard thing. <laughs> Like, it really highlights how different this world is compared to the world that Jack is from. You know, kind of, it kind of gives a little bit of element of danger, but also kind of exciting, too. Like, whoa, look at this thing. <laughs> I can make him do this. I can make him wear that. And again, uh, another uh, Easter egg. Uh, he, when he's uh, dancing and putting the dress, we find out it's actually the dress from Alice in Wonderland. And it's, it's cute. It's a nice little Easter egg. And I, I mean, that's the thing. I, I never really got annoyed by the Easter eggs from Disney. I, I felt like, again, they were poking fun of themselves, you know. I mean, maybe to other people it's like, okay, we get it. You're a Disney film. Just enough. We get it. <laughs> but I, I never minded, you know, like I never got annoyed with it. I, I, I thought that it's a cute idea. And and again, like, you, you, you see how happy Inma is. You can see how excited she is to play with her new toy or new pet. And, you know, like, she can play with it and dress it up. And, yeah, I think that's what they were going for. Maybe he, she looks at him as kind of like a doll, a toy, maybe a pet. And I, I think it's a cute way to get to know our characters here. Wash him in the dish, but careful, he's a <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm really loving how they're they're finding rhymes to these to, to this song. I that, that's a funny thing. Like I I've, I've never really been good at improvisation, like trying to find rhymes that like like flow right away. But this it kind of makes sense, you know. Like if she was going to give Jack a bath, it kind of would have to be in a dish. <laughs> and again, you know, like you can see it in his face. Like it really highlights the comedy. How you know he's annoyed at where he is. It's like oh, I gotta take a bath. <laughs> and you know she's still like playing with him, like having fun with him. Like he's ticklish, and he, you know he kind of lets loose. You know, like he's getting tickled by this and. It's, it's kind of like a little bit of a relief. Like, he's not a stick in the mud. Like, he can have fun, but but again, like, uh, <laughs> but again, a tickle's kind of forced upon us, and sometimes it's not really that fun. So we can kind of get a laugh at it, but we can also look at it as, <laughs> that's cute. It's, like, funny. I'll never ever let my man go. <laughs> and what I love about this scene, too, is it, it has a little... It has an element of danger to it, but not too much. Like, we're, we're not really scared of Inma, but we feel the threat, you know? Like, we can sense the size when, you know, her foot goes on the ground and it shakes. And you can see how scared Jack is after he's trying to sneak away, but he's caught, he's blocked off by her foot. And you, you always want to do that for a movie like this, you know? Like, there's a little bit of conflict there, you know? She doesn't want him to leave. And... It's also like, you know, like she's singing about, you know, how much he doesn't want, he wants him to stay, doesn't want to let him go. And I love how they take advantage of, not, not, not how they take advantage, but how you can see she's kind of talking to both him and the audience. How she's saying to the audience, you know, I'm not going to let him go. I don't want him to go. And he's, she's also kind of talking to Jack, like, no, no, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> but again, it's not really threatening. You know, she's so excited to have him, like, as a pet, as a toy, that, you know, she wants to keep him. She wants to hang on to him. And, you know, she's doing that little cute, no, no. And you can tell she, you know, she doesn't mean any harm. She's just you know, a little bit bigger and a lot to control, basically. <laughs> it's kind of a cute way of in indicating, you know, who's in charge here. <laughs> I'm kind of mixed about this montage. Uh, for one thing I really like about it is, again, you could see the look on Jack's face, how annoyed he is, like, this is my life. <laughs> And, and again, you see some of the Easter eggs, like you see Princess Jasmine and I think Belle and even Dumbo in the, in the background of one of those. And even with him flying on the newspaper plane, like, uh, whoa, that looks like fun. I'd like to do that. What I don't, some, one thing I don't, I kind of have a nitpick about is, are they going for a modern Disney look or like a modern era? Or are they trying to make it like part of a period? You know, it seems like if they're trying to focus on the age of exploration, when did they have Mousetrap back in the 15 or 1600s? <laughs> like, I, I, like, while it is funny seeing him on the game, on the board game Mousetrap and get caught in the trap, like, you, you gotta wonder, like, does that really fit? But I say, you know, it's a fairy tale. Anything can happen. But if you want to be a stickler to it, like... Okay, like some things you can take away, like like the princess dolls, you can kind of take away, like, you know, dolls are kind of timeless anyway, they're fine. You know, she probably read uh, fairy tales in her, in her place, her era, her era, her, her country, I'll say, her land. And, and also the newspaper, like, I don't really think they had newspapers during the age of exploration, but it's a fairy tale, it's a different world compared to uh, Spain or the land that Jack's from, so it's whatever, it's cute. My little man, self-reliant, he likes to pretend that I'm a giant. Uh, pretend? Something often done in movies with giants is they, they usually feature the tiny person living in a dollhouse or a Barbie hall house. I think they did that in uh, the Gulliver's Travels movies where uh, Gulliver was in uh, the land of the giants and he was uh, living there in the giant's bedroom and uh, it, it's 
you know, like you expect this kind of from a, a giant story like this. And it's actually kind of interesting seeing him actually wash his clothes. Like maybe he's been living there for a while. Maybe this dollhouse is actually a real house that Inma took or the giants took. Who knows? <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of nice seeing that, you know, you expect it. And, and we also see, you know, like she's still being cute. And one detail I really love about this is how when you listen to her sing, you can sense her saying, my little man, <laughs> like she's kind of getting into that, you know, like, oh, look at him. I want to kiss him. <laughs> so, you know, like, again, like she loves having him here. Like she thinks he's cute and actually giving him a compliment, too. He's self-reliant. You know, he's he's able, you know, he's got some strengths to him. And I really love the last bit. Like, not only is it amazing that they found something to rhyme giant with, <laughs> reliant, but it also highlights her perspective of Jack. You know, she says, he likes to pretend I'm a giant. You know, again, that highlights how she sees herself as regular size, but he's small. But then again, it turns to his perspective. He turns, he breaks the fourth wall to us and it's like, uh, I'm not pretending. <laughs> Again, like, he thinks he's regular size and she's the big person. <laughs> you know, like, it, I like that differing perspective is presented here. Different perspectives are presented here. I I really enjoy that. Again, it, it really makes it a little more, th uh, more of a three-dimensional story, like a, a, a deeper story, you know, like they're deeper characters. And I, I hope that in the fan film they kind of highlight that. I, I really hope so. Now this last scene I really love because I think this is a really good uh, theme to focus on for a story like this. How, you know, she highlights that she's feeling lonely in this castle. And, and another detail I really love too, we don't really see a lot of activity. Like there aren't a lot of other giants, you know, like her parents aren't there. Maybe they're, de maybe they're dead. Maybe they're traveling. Maybe they were killed by the storm giants. You know, we don't know. But again, like we, we can tell that she's lonely and that's where her love for Jack really stems from, you know, he's keeping her company. And I, I think that'd be really cool to explore. Like, like how possessive is she going to be over him? Like, does she really want him to stay for so long? Will she understand that he has to go back to his town, his country? I think that's really great to explore. And what I also love about the music is it starts getting slower. It's, it's calmer. It's more gentle. And you can, you can tell by the way she moves, you know, she's more careful holding him when she's walking to the throne. And I really love that it's really highlighting the gentleness of her. Like, you can really see what what's going on in her head. She doesn't want to be alone. She's so happy that she's not alone now. And it also kind of, it kind of, you know, like, points out what it's like for us when we have pets. Like, uh, how much we value company, even if it's from, like, a little critter, like a, a hamster, a, a bug, a, a dog, a cat. Like, uh, how much do we see in our pets? You know, do we see them as, you know, thinking individuals? Do we see them as just pets less than? Like, I think that'd be a really good thing to explore here. Like, how much does she think about Jack? You know, is, is he a regular person like her? Like, is, she, is he less than? I, I think that's really good to explore. And something else I really like, uh, right when she's uh, holding him like this, is that little tiny move she made with her head. Like, it really indicates the excitement that she has, you know, like, oh, I'm so excited. Like, that's a really good detail to focus on. I, I like that they added that in. This little man of my own. Such a great image. You know, I, I really like that image of him in in her hand uh looking up to her and like smiling a little bit like it's not like a big bright smile or anything but it's a nice you know like I, I, like you can tell that jack likes her but he's still kind of iffy about this like is this really where i belong but i like that they're indicating that he likes her too like and, and i really hope that they stick with 
them being friends. I, I really don't think it would work with them being uh, in a relationship. For one thing, she's supposed to be 11 in this movie, and I don't think that would really fly. Like, if an 18-year-old or 20-year-old get involved with an 11-year-old, no, don't ever do that, Disney. I don't think they would do that. They can understand that. But I think it would still work as a like a brother-sister kind of relationship, a, a friendship, a really strong friendship, very unique, you know, something not really explored. It'd be really cool to see this. Like, if a princess could be friends with a snowman, like, of, of, of course a princess could be with a smaller being, a smaller individual. And, and these images of her uh, with him and looking up at her face, like, I find it really profound. Like, there's a lot of great imagery there. Like... If I was a painter, I'd love to be able to paint or illustrate a face, um, a giantess face with uh, a little human, like, uh, reaching up to, like, touch her chin or her nose or her forehead. Like, it's, like, very profound. Like, kind of like the theme of, of forgiveness. Like, uh, getting in touch with something greater than yourself. Like, maybe God, maybe nature, religion, um, spirits, or... Um, you know, like something, something on those lines, but, but, but I really love these images and I love how gentle they are and soft they are. And another thing I said before, how it's really highlighting how lonely it is there. Again, we don't really see a lot of giants walking around, like no nobody really in the castle except Inma, and nobody else even in these other lands. And I'm actually really curious how this land works. Like, it seems like there's a middle land that Inma is the princess of, there might be a lighter side, like a mountain, but there's also the land of the storm giants, how... You know, there's a dark cloud overhead. Like, can they control the weather? Do they, like, make storms? Are they pillagers? Like, uh, how would they be the villains here? Like, I'm actually kind of curious how that would work. Would it be, like, a reversal of the BFG? Um, a female giant uh, protects a, a, a male human from the other giants protecting them, even though Inma might be the runt of the litter. Is she kind of a storm giant? Like, I'd love to see where this is explored. And... I also love the music, how soft it is and how stringy it is. Again, it kind of brings it in touch with um, music you probably would hear from this era. Probably music you would hear from uh, Spain, probably. And that was Little Man. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cute, it's a cute song. Like, I, I really love this clip because of the potential it has. And I'm going to join this Patreon to help them make the money that they need to fund this project. And I hope I've encouraged you guys to, to join this Patreon and help them make this. You know, this is our chance to have something, some semblance of what the movie Gigantic could have been. A fan film, I say, is better than no film. So um, if you guys join, great. I'm going to join after my next paycheck clears. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like spread the word if you need to. This is our chance to actually see some version of Gigantic. If, if you guys wanted to see it and are disappointed just as I am, check, check out the original clip for yourself. I'm going to leave it in the description box. Check it out. Support them. And thank you guys for watching. And you guys have a good week. Later.